Hey everyone, it's uh, Joe and Isaiah. Since today we have a couple of, they're actually hero members here. And uh, the reason why we're doing this video is because um, Ryan had this problem. He was working through with um, WebView 2. And we wanted to make a video because the thing is, ActiveX is dying. ActiveX and IE, we all know they're slowly dying. And when you try to render a page, sometimes you can use it. More often than not, even if it does work, it doesn't work properly. You just run into a lot of problems. So I said, why don't we make a, a video with all of us? Because um, Thomas actually has a tool that we've been working on for him. He's a client that we've been developing a tool with WebView 2. And we thought, we'd hey, let's have a call where we can kind of work through with Ryan, but we can share it to everyone so they can learn. Uh, what I do want to point out is two things here is one, WebView 2 requires version 2 of AutoHotKey. So you got to be using that. Um, and also, I'll put the URL beneath me here. All the files that we're going to share today, you can get at that URL beneath me. Um, and if you if you learn something in the video, please like the video. It helps us out. There you go. So, Ryan, why don't you give us a little outline of what you were trying to do? Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Joe. And, and great to be able to share this in this Hero Forum here today. Um, so what, I, what I'd like to do is, uh, well, the challenge is I want to use, I'm using Google Maps. And I've uh, followed through some of your excellent videos before around APIs. So I've got an API that's calling back some latitude and longitude and doing what's called geocoding. So taking an address, turning into latitude and longitude and taking a latitude and longitude, turning into address. Working really well. AutoHotKey is great for that. It, it works with the API. My next step is I want to visualize the results mm -hmm. on a map. Okay. okay. And uh, I want to do that in an AutoHotKey GUI. Okay, so I want to take the information that's passed back mm -hmm. and I want to uh, insert a Google map or it doesn't actually matter what kind of map, but uh, whether it's open street map or Google maps, put it inside of AutoHockey GUI and then drop a pin or in my case, I want to draw a circle around the map. So I have some JavaScript, so I know it's possible. I've seen the, the markup in the, in the API documentation for Google. Okay, my challenge is how do I take that JavaScript? How do I take that um, that uh, insight that they provided and translate it into the AutoHotKey environment and insert that map into a GUI uh, using AutoHotKey? And then the most important thing, interact with that map using the mm -hmm. API, I guess, or other means and visualize those results in a map that I can control. Okay. Yeah, that sounds interesting enough. Now, I can talk to... The basics of um, WebView, the WebView controller. I can talk to about the general idea of what you're pursuing, but I cannot give you way too many details on it because I haven't done it myself. So, um, regarding the JavaScript, that's great because um, and actually Thomas recently just made some changes to the to the library. I think it is that allows you to execute JavaScript, you know, any JavaScript in it, which is perfect. But again, there's a few things that we have to uh, dive into uh, before we move on. So few quirks about this library. Let me go ahead and show you basically what we're working with. And you will see how easy it actually is. So I'm going to share my screen real quick. This is a lot of code, supposedly. It's not that much. But let me explain what is going on. First of all, we are including our library, which would be in our lib folder, right? And we have the web view controller here. We do need this com var as well. And we do need these DLL files here. So this lib folder is part of what we're going to be sharing so that you can go ahead and just include it in your project. That's not a problem. Now, and I think second, uh, Isaiah, additionally, you also need the web view to runtime installed. Right, yeah, that's correct, which is coming by default in a lot of machines, Windows yes. 10 yeah. and up, but sometimes they're not installed. And one of the things is that if you have Office installed, Office 6, uh, 365, it is already installed. So mm -hmm. it is something that more likely than not, you have it installed. But I think Thomas just mentioned that you had something that checks whether the uh, runtime is installed yeah, or a, not, and it would download exactly, it. Exactly, just a short script that... Uh, right. That checks if it's installed and if not it asks the user if he wants to install it um and yeah of course you can only go ahead if the runtime is installed otherwise just importing it will uh, crash Very good. so i'm gonna assume ryan that you have never worked with version two of our hotkey right yeah exactly okay now version two uh, what i'm gonna talk about here is 
the concept is almost the same in version one and version two. The only thing that changes is a little bit of how you write it out. But you remember that whenever you create a GUI in version one, you have to show the GUI, right? So that's the same concept. The only thing is that here in version two, GUIs are objects. So you create an object in any variable. I just use the word main. And now the main variable, you can call a lot of um, functions that you are very aware of. So for example, main.add would add a control. And now you just have to do the same as you did before, like add an edit control with the width 200 and the text test. And that would add an edit control. It's the same thing. It just looks a little bit different, okay? Because now you're accessing it through an object. That's all. But in the end, we are just creating a GUI and showing it. Now, here's one of the quirks of the web view controller. Usually in our hotkey, as you did before, you create the GUI and then add a bunch of controls. You can have an edit control, a drop guy. Doesn't work like that. It works that it has to be attached to a control. Okay, so it has to be attached to a window. So you have to create the window first. And after you create it with the show method does, now you're going to create the web view controller and pass the handle to that window and the web view attaches itself to it. That's one of a, a weirdness that comes with how that person created the library. It's not out of hotkey. It's just that library that is like that, you know, that library is weird. So that means the size of the web view is determined to what you are attaching it to. So I created my GUI, gave it a size, and when I create it, it would take that size. That's all that there is. Can to I it. just ask a quick ignorant question here? I'm just oh, looking okay. at the difference between uh, version one and version two. So I'm used to obviously, for example, creating a uh, a window, a GUI, right? Mm -hmm. And then using ActiveX, you can define the parameters of the the inserted iframe or whatever you know, whatever you want to. Right. But he, so how do you? Does it account for the fact that the bra the browse or the web element of the GUI may not be the whole GUI? Exactly, yes. In that case, again, as I mentioned, you would have to actually kind of like attach it to a control. What we do is a workaround, which is ugly and I don't like it, but it's the only thing that I have available, is that I add a text control, um, a text control into my GUI with the width that I want. So width 200, height 200. The thing with text controls is that if you do not add any text, they're invisible. They have height and width, but they're invisible. But now if I attach this guy, so I, I call it my, my placeholder, right? So this placeholder, if I add it, if I attach my web view to that placeholder, the GUI is gonna have one size, but my web view is going to have a different size because it's always taking the size of where you are attaching it to. Do you understand? But but that is a really weird that's, that's, design. That's a really key, yeah, that's a really key point. Right. So that is a weird oh, design. It is something that I personally do not like, but that's how it works at the moment. But in general, you always have to remember the web view is going to take the size of who of the window that you attached it to. And at this, in this particular case, if I'm attaching it to a text control, it would take the size of that text control. That's all there is to it. But let me try this. Let me show you the results. And, and of just one other quick point to clarify. Just, just when you're saying add it to a text control, if I obviously want to effectively inserting a browser or like a web page inside my GUI, so my GUI might be bigger than my browser I want to insert. Yeah. Could I insert it using the text object or I, I can do it? Like yeah, that, you, you should use so the text object. Like you, you would use the text object for that. The text object is going to determine the width and height and, and position of the controller. And when you attach it to it, it would be attached in that position and size. So uh, it is weird design, but I will show you in a second how it looks like. But right now, let me just forget about the text controller for now. Let's just uh, focus on the main. So this is the main GUI. I'm attaching it to the main GUI and the, the, um, 
The result of this is that if I run my script, you would have a GUI with a specific size showing Google Maps, okay? So it's extremely simple. It's not hard to show, and, and, and it is completely, you know, you can, you can interact with it, okay? Now, you, everything works just because you're simply looking at, um, you are looking at a web page. It's just a, a small window, right? So again, embedding a whole page, working page into your GUI is not hard. Now let's go ahead and talk about the sizing. So let's make my GUI a little bit bigger. Let's make it, um, the width is gonna be 1,200. The height is gonna be 1,500. I don't know, I don't care. Let me add a text. This is my placeholder. Um, I'm gonna main.add a text. And um, the width of this is gonna be smaller. So 400 by 400. And now I'm going to attach my web view to that um, element instead of my GUI. So at this size, but my web view would be a different size. Do you see that? Does that make sense? Does it, that that is basically? Um, let me make it. Yep. Yeah. Let me make this the height. And, and you be. can part in the same way with auto hockey, and the same ca case as auto, with auto hockey, the, the, the one point three or whatever. You can specify the position using those parameters: the width, the height. The right. Width, so, so, so basically, right now, this is this is the basic positioning. But if I want to put it, you know, like the y plus uh 300 pixels right and that would put it down a little bit so now i would expect it to be below you see so so yes you can do this and if you have other so let's say that you have other controls let's say that you have a main dot add let's add an edit control that is you know 50. i could make it so that my control is below so my my as as this thing takes a position automatically, now my map will be below the edit control automatically. So here's my edit control and here's my map because now I'm actually positioning it automatically with the text control. Does that make sense? The web view basically it functions um, yep. or like the it, it needs a host object, right? That it right. fills out. It needs a host. That's, that's exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what's going on. The web view control needs something to attach to. If you do it with a text control, you have all the benefits of the text control positioning that is automatic. You can use X plus five, Y plus 500, and that makes total sense in Arrow Hotkey. So when the web view is placed within that object it would be in that position without any issues you will not have um you know so mm -hmm. um i don't mean just one second this was a mistake so um it would definitely just go ahead and place yeah, that it is a great it insight should. because i wouldn't yeah, I wouldn't instinctively think that's not very intuitive. No, no, that's no, that's, that, that's, that's, that's yeah, true. That's <laughs> it's not inst it is not instinctive. It, it, it's something that is a weird way of working with an object. Now, there's another situation with it. The web view control, you will notice that when you create the object, it gives you this variable called web view. And then you have this core view too. So inside this object, there are other objects. The one that controls how the thing actually works is what is called the core web view, okay? So when you get a, this uh, you know, variable, you would have to get this object to be able to do certain things like navigating into a web page, which brought up an interesting question. If I go to a map, for example, you notice that whenever you you click on something, you would have a URL with this, but that sadly did not work. If I put this into a new tab, let's go ahead and open a new tab and I do that. Let me see. Yeah, that doesn't really work, right? But here's the thing, I could add this position here and that would work. So with JavaScript, 
I could insert into this element that position and make it go. You see what I mean? That's where Thomas might jump in and say how he does it, because he has some examples. Uh, one of the examples here is actually opening the, and, and, and we will see what he's doing is he's creating a GUI as we did before, creating a GUI, showing the GUI, the position and format, he's doing some math in it. You don't need to do it, but in his case, he was doing some math. Uh, let, let me just jump in because it's not I uh, that that uh, wrote this code. It's it's from okay. the forum. I just collected the examples. Oh I'm right, okay, okay, okay. It's my and, favorite uh, way to work. <laughs> <laughs> and also the um, the ability to run JavaScript, for example, is, is already included. I, I didn't add anything. Uh, All right. To that. So that's uh, w w what I uh, just added um, to the Dropbox before um, was. Uh, you know, a, a little function that makes it easier to run JavaScript and um, to get like a readable output uh, that okay, you, so, you would so, have in the console, for example, if you hit F12 on your browser, uh -huh. and you uh, you have the JavaScript console and you type, for example, document.url, you will get a response. You will, you know, it will tell yeah, you the completely opened web page. But it wasn't completely um, easy to uh, to get that in a readable format in auto hotkey. So uh, right. what I did, you know, I just researched how to get the correct string formatting so that you can actually work uh, with the response in auto hotkey. Okay, perfect. It's still a lot of work, but yeah. Now let me go ahead and stop here. Uh, These lines six and seven are the ones that we saw in our example. So here, when I navigate it, this is where we stopped right? So if we go to the other example, here the navigate is where we stopped. Everything else is the same as I just showed you. The only difference is that the width and height were calculated instead of actually fixed. But here comes a second part of the object, which is a little bit tricky and is the one that I'm not really familiar with. So the web core view two, which is the one that I mentioned before, right? has a few methods which start with the word add like this. So if I just use this object, put it there, add. All of these methods, what they do, all of those add methods with an underscore, by the way, all of these add methods, they set up what are called events. So the browser, the web view, whenever, it, whenever you click or when the page finish, loading, it sends an event. Usually we do not capture those by default because we don't care. But in case you want to capture something, this is how you would do it. You would have to call, for example, the um, uh, navigation completed event, which means when the page finishes loading, that event gets fired. Okay, so that's one that I would like to capture. Uh, there are others, like for example, when something fails, um, when a frame is created and so on. So it depends what you really want, but mainly I think the navigation complete is the most useful for most of the cases. When the page finishes loaded, loading, I want to do a few things. Now, it is a little bit tricky to set this up because again, the way how the library was created. You use the at navigation complete, and now this second function here, let me pull it out. It does two things. It grabs a function that takes those parameters. Okay. So it takes three parameters, the handler, the core. You see this core to web view. You get it here. And the arguments for that event. Those are three options that you can put. And you have to pass that function name into a function from the web view that is called handler. You put the name of this function into this handler and that returns a specific type of object. It's a weird object that is understood by the library. I don't have much information about it. I could stop right here and see what it looks like. So if I go ahead and stop there, I would take a look at the, yeah, this is a type of weird object that I'm not really familiar with. But that object is then passed to the event, the navigation completed event, so that the navigation completed event says, okay, whenever I get the event, I'm going to call this object. That is what is going on. Okay. 
It's a so, little bit tricky. Um, it's a little bit weird. So Isaiah, in, in practical terms, would you just have a while loop until that condition is satisfied and then you'd carry on? So you, no. is that how you would apply, how would you apply this? No, 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 no. You don't need a loop because you're going to oh. you're going to get notified okay so that's that, that's the good thing about events that you do not need a loop waiting for something because the browser is going to notify you the only thing is that you have to capture the notification which is what this you have to this, wait until it's satisfied don't you i don't have to wait for it no nope. no no what i mean is so imagine the page just again in layman's terms for me so the page is loading Mm -hmm. okay i understand you're listening for the events to fire no that. you're not you're not listening to anything but how do you, but you don't, in practical terms, again, you don't want to do your next step in your process, right. whatever it is. It's not going to happen. Um, oh, so <laughs> yeah. it will literally pause until. Right. So, so, so here's the thing. Okay. I understand. So, so let's, like a these two line. lines, these two lines are doing something very specific. Forget about everything below. It doesn't matter what is below those two lines. What you're telling it is, okay, I don't want to be waiting for something. What I want to do is. When the navigation is complete, call that object. So now, when the browser, the core web view thing, it, it did that for you. It is already setting up the loop or anything, whatever. Okay. However, they're handling that. I don't know how oh, it is. Okay. And I don't That's care. So, so at yes. this point, it doesn't matter how they're handling it. I don't care. The only thing that I care about is when you finish, call this function. And that's what I'm telling it with these two lines of code, which he or the person who created the example just said, why do I need to create an object? Just copy this inside that, and I don't need a variable. It just does it automatically. That's what is going on. But in general, you're telling when the navigation is completed, call this particular handler, and now you have to define the handler. The handler is what am I going to do when it finishes um, uh, loading. So that's this part of the code down there in which I'm defining the navigation complete handler. I need these three parameters. That's okay. And what the example did is that he created a variable that is going to create some JavaScript in there. And then it will automatically execute that for that particular script. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, so I'm executing a script, but at the same time, I'm setting up another handler because I'm going to wait for another event. So it's going to go ahead and click on something. And when you click, it would actually return an event. That's what is going to happen because when you click, the browser returns an event. So I want to capture it again. This is what this handler here is doing. It's capturing the script completing handler this time. And what it does is well, when the script completer handler gets executed, then I'm going to add another click. And when I click on that, I want to call another handler. So he is just clicking and expecting another answer. And when that answer is there, he's clicking again. So there's like a few stops into it, notice that here it says testing. One of the things that he's doing is setting up a value to a little, um, to the search area mm -hmm. of the, of the um, uh, help file. Mm -hmm. And once you have that, it finishes there. So when I go ahead and run this code, what you would see is that it opens the help file, goes to search, and puts the word testing in the search bar. And all of that was done via JavaScript. So this is JavaScript right here. Yep, yep, yep. And he's just passing it there. But every time he clicks, he's just expecting another, another response, which is now this is the part of the code that might become a little bit complex. And it is a little bit um, because if you have never worked with events, it might get a little bit hairy, but probably Thomas might tell you how he has handled a few things. Maybe in his experience, he might explain a little bit more. I think, yeah, this makes sense in principle. I understand. It's like a stop go. So you wait until the condition is satisfied and then it does, it executes something and then it's waiting for the callback to say, okay, that's happened. And then you can then execute again and again and again. So you would nest these 
Yeah. Quite I mean, you don't, I don't think you necessarily have to. I think uh, the reason they're nested here is just to, to demonstrate uh, something, how you would wait on another, on another right. step. But um, And also, by the way, I think also um, both the library and also the all, the, all of these examples here are by uh, the, the author of the original library, this uh, THQBY guy from the Auto Hotkey mm -hmm. forums. So he, he put a lot of work into this. But um, yeah, I think, you know, in theory, you could put a lot of code in, into one. Uh, uh, yes, in one, in one handler. Yes. You know, unless you're doing something that takes some time to complete, just put it all in, in the same step. Okay. So, so in, in here, for example, where, where he's just adding uh, a, another handler that ends in number two, you can actually put the same handler again and have if statements inside it. And verify if this happened, then do that. Or but but it's just one handler, which is how I would do it. Instead right. of having ten functions doing different things, I could just set one function, which is a handler, a general handler, and it would define it would define which behavior I'm going to follow depending on some conditions. Is but in general, the approach in in your case, what I would say is, first of all, we would navigate to a web page set up a navigation completed handler, which is the most important one. And from there, I would use JavaScript to set up the search bar with the, um, with the uh, number and, and check this out. I, we could just go ahead and do this real quick. Let's do this. Um, so this is my, I'm going to create my navigation completed. I'm going to get my handler, which has three parameters. So the three parameters are usually, let me see, we have the handler, the web view, and the thing here. And by the way, when you execute a script, you don't necessarily need a handler. You only need a handler if you actually are interested in the return value. So, right, um, yeah. right exactly. That, that's if you want something in, right? Yeah. But yeah. here's the thing. In, in our case, if I go to Google Maps, the first thing I have to identify this particular box right here, right, which is an input. Um, and uh, I could get the, the selector. And let's just test it in a console here. So I say document query selector. And I get my selector, which is this guy, right? So that's my box. And I could set the value to uh, test. Notice that it changed the yeah. text of it, right? So I could do that. Or I don't know if it is the text, inner text. Okay, no. So it's, it's going to be the value. So we need to change the value of whatever we want. And then I want to kind of like... Um, search which might be this button here no that's not it it's probably just enter right yeah yeah that that that's gonna direct oh, oh no the yeah, it's uh, no it's probably just hidden because the uh, right the, which the is window got too small sorry i see so um right so what we want is to perform a search i know that the the This yeah, you can, you can send yeah, a I could, to that yeah exactly to this guy could get the selector as well. So I could, in theory, set a value. Um, let's search for cafeteria, and then after that, I would also want to document query selector, and I want to click on this one. Uh, that should exactly so let's clear this out clear it oh, you know what I want to not no no I don't want any of that right now right so right now it is empty on the left so I don't have any values there and if I do this that should definitely I know that it set the thing but it didn't click seems like hold on I thought that it did click a few seconds ago. Hold on. So setting up the value is not really enough, seems like. So hold on. But did it click? 
I don't think that's, that's what I'm that, that's what I'm right. So setting the value of the thing is not enough. <laughs> that's what happens. So I could set the value to something, but it's still empty. That's what is going on. So, and that is something that's where it gets a little bit tricky dealing with web pages like this because they're not. Yeah, it's not the standard HTML. Uh, for it, would be, it would be easy that as soon as you click, it does that. But what you would do is take a look at how they do it. What are they doing? It seems to me that there's a JavaScript action that they're calling, right? And that JavaScript is the one that is determining. Um, I remember. You you could try sending a, a, an enter key to the um, to the input instead of trying to click the button. Okay, I, I think like setting the value and also sending kind of like an enter key. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the, I mean, the one part is that I'm not really sure how that would be like send event. I think it was. Or something. I have to look it up as well. Uh, right, but let me let me while you look on that, let's stop right there because it's get, it's yeah. going to get too deep for what we're looking for. There are ways of doing this. Now, the way how we would might be doing it is sir, sending these um, values or this, this stuff into um, the, let's start with the simple one. So here we go. I could definitely just grab this, this thing here, copy it. I put, put it, it in, the, in the Zoom chat, by the way, if you want to try it. See, this is a five lines of code. Right. And let me just one second. And that would be. And I would then just use the core view yeah. and yeah. execute. Okay. So let me see what the function is. Is uh, well, he's using the, he's, yeah, he's doing the same from the outside, but basically we don't need that. So the name is execute script. And I would just execute this script and set a zero here, for example. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. that should this, definitely, when the thing is completed, then I would try to execute this JavaScript. Let me see if just by using the parameter that has been sent here works. So if I run this, let's see what happens. Sometimes it's, oh, there we go. Integer, okay, exit. Okay, oh, so that's, this is actually the pointer to it. So let's grab the web view directly. Right, let's try this. Yeah, there it is. You saw the text. How I mean, let's say there it was. Yeah, but uh, let, let me let me yeah. when I hover my mouse in it, it 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 just disappeared. But let's just go ahead and do this. Yeah, no, it worked. I'm sure. Yeah. Ah, but it's showing up and then removing it. I noticed that. Maybe maybe it, like the um, um, the page load event is triggered too early. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe if if you add a sleep or something, uh, maybe it won't disappear. Then can you try that? Okay. Sleep, let's make 3,000. Three seconds is yeah, more yeah. than enough. So the page is loaded, but there's a few other things that are coming on. There it is. So it's not yeah. going to disappear yeah. because something else actually did it. But as you can see, I, I do have methods of kind of like interacting with the page after the page is loaded, um, which allows me to then do other things. Right. So notice, notice that actually clicking on that would have worked. Let's let's try it. <laughs> I don't I don't know how that didn't work over here. So let's do this. Um, document query selector, and I'm, we're gonna do this. Let's do this real quick. Um, and the second one that we wanted to kind of like click was this guy. Uh-huh. Actually a single quote at the beginning of that line. Where? Yeah, here. Yeah. I have it. it. It's a continuation oh, section. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah just, okay. Right. <laughs> so at this point, uh, I'm setting that up and then trying to click on it and seeing what happens then. Yeah. So it should just load. 
ah, the click didn't really work. But try the, is, the enter event. It, it you sent be, it. You no, sent it on the on the Zoom chat here. Yeah. No, no, no the Zoom, Zoom chat. Okay. Sorry. The, the other thing I've done, just dealing with web scraping and li event listeners and this kind of junk and crap, is used Chrome to look at the events that actually get fired. And that uh -huh. can, I don't know if that would solve us our problems here, but I know when I was doing the stuff before, it was really insightful. Of like, oh, this is what's actually getting triggered, right? So I can see the event listeners that are the events that are actually getting triggered. Right. Yeah. So we are having. Sorry. I have an event. This is my key press, key code, and dispatch event. Now, the problem here is that I have to, um, this part, this input here, which is the input, is going to be this guy. So let's just add this here. Uh, var input equals this query selector here. So first, I have my input here, save into my variable, create an event. I initialize my event. I tell it what that event is going to be. Mm -hmm. And then for my input, I go ahead and dispatch that event. And then... And I, yeah, the last the, is the enter key. The enter key, yeah, exactly. Right. The enter key would be 13 yeah. at this point. So let me just remove this and see if that actually hopefully works. Oh, there is an oh, enter there. Right. Yeah, there is an enter there because now I have a list. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, that, okay, list yeah. that list didn't show up at the beginning. Yeah, so th yeah, this yeah. one actually really worked. But then again, again, what I meant is there are many ways of actually interacting with this. I hoped that passing uh, the URL like this to maps, like so maps.google.com slash uh, a, a URL like that might have also... If that Which, really was the goal, I think you can find a way to do that. Right, exactly. Yeah, because, pretty sure because what right. happens is what he said is he already has the he already has the 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 thing. But I could definitely just do this. Hold on, <laughs> let's try this now instead of test. Right, I could put the actual location and hit enter and see what happens. Because if I put a location and hit enter, it should scroll into it. Right. Um, the only problem is that, so let me see, I put oh, it. Yeah, right, 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 right. That Which should definitely do it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me try that and see what happens. Ooh, it said, oh, you know what? It said it. No, no, no. It, it it actually put it, but didn't hit enter. <laughs> so, so I mean, you can try uh, uh, hitting enter. So if again. I hit enter <laughs> here, right. That's interesting. Let, let me let me hit enter a few times. Let me see what happens there. Because let me try it. Let me see what happens there. Yeah. Uh, it's not sending the event, which might be because of certain settings in the in the web view. But again, here's the thing. We already know that we can set the value of it. It's can, can just it a matter. Is yep. just use Chrome. I'm just uh -huh. curious if this this will help, right? Use Chrome to go to the page. Look at the debug now. Over on the right, somewhere over here, we can we can look at the what, what in the world is it called? The the event. There's an event like oh, events. okay. I understand what you mean. So there is something could be sources. That sounds right. Yeah, over on the right now, there's the event listener breakpoints. Right. And, and those we can turn on and off what we want to break on. Right. Or we can have it break on everything and then load the page and it should tell us this is what we saw. Right. Like this is what happened. I just stopped on a keyboard press key down, key up, key and press input. So it did do a window key down. What's and under this, global Oh, listeners. look at this. Look Before at this. We can see, right. No, no, no. Look at that. This is basically something is trusted. We didn't have that. We don't have location. So my object here, the object that we created, it, it was just sending very small information, but probably the event needs a few other things like the current target, 
and a lot of here's the key code 13 you see that so we sent only the key code right but it seems to be that this is getting a lot of other information including the path look at that so it is not as simple as just sending the enter key and this is something to be expected when you deal with pages like google and facebook and yeah th those that are really big companies they do very complex stuff so just you think you're just hitting an enter but they're doing a lot of other things in the background that you don't even know about so i, I would i would say if we have a way to go to a place with a url which i know is possible i think it is totally doable i think it's with the data let me see hold on what was it no it's not that so let me yeah we actually with we maestria we, we, we built it that. where we could interactively pull up the houses that we were tagging with the app we wrote in right. google maps um using the url if i remember correctly so it, it it is definite i know that it should be doable Ryan, are you interested in getting um, data out of the web view as well, or do you just want to put in? Yeah, I'll, I can talk a bit more to the use case. So, so mm -hmm. I, as uh, we were just talking about, I know the the latitude, longitude, and I know the address. What I want to do is very specific. I have a JFiddle example in JavaScript now that mm -hmm. um, I want to open a map and draw and this is the i think the more complicated thing because it's not mm -hmm. by default what the the user can do is draw a circle around a point okay mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i i can I understand in, i can put in the chat the jfiddle because maybe you, it might be useful to have a look at how the um hold on javascript will be adapted i'm sorry we're doing something we're we're trying to do something manually while you're using an API. Yes, exactly. But now, I think this has been very useful anyway, because the people will see. Uh, but here's the thing, the API that you're using actually draws a map. Yes, exactly. The exactly. only thing that we have to do is display it with yeah. what yes, you yeah, control. Exactly. Right. Now, exactly. when, 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 it, when, it, when it draws the map, do you get a yeah. URL to that map? Uh, well, if you have a look at the JFiddle I just sent in the chat, you'll see, see that it's 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 everything's there. And mm -hmm. uh, they have a function that then visualizes a map. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I know exactly I, what you're talking I, about. Yeah. And I I also need four circles, but they won't. They'll, anyway, we're regardless. Oh, you know what? Plot <laughs> multiple circles on a map. This is awesome. All right. This is okay. a Google, this is a just to be clear. This is a, a Google. Uh, I, I'm going to show you because website. you can have this in a file. Yeah. And have the web view display the file. So ah, we don't have to fantastic. do anything, right? Exactly. Yeah, so we yeah. don't have to do absolutely anything. Yeah, so we, we, yeah. Perfect. Let me let me try this. Let me try this. So this is a very interesting example. Now we have some CSS and JavaScript. I think all of this should be on the script. Uh, we could have uh, here in the head, um, yeah uh script uh, hold on let me do this script yeah um this is our main script here right why did it why did it change well that's correct but where's my highlighting what that's weird something happened there Okay, so that was my script, and I need my styles, right? Mm -hmm. um, on a... So you're just putting everything in line here, yep. it, so yeah? Yeah, so I'm just making everything in one file style. Okay. So, yeah, my oh, it's but, but basically the the web view would would uh, just be used as a display, right? Exactly, it's just a, a yeah. display thing, right. and and yeah. okay, so uh, that, yeah, that should be that totally should cool. definitely just go right. ahead and. Right. It, if people are following along here, what I what I this example that I shared with Isaiah is, is in the Google. Um, there's a Google JFiddle with the Google API key, right? Uh, so we can see if we can use this and apply this learning with right. using RMT two. This using is our um, web view. API example. We will have it later on HTML. 
But here's where it gets a little bit tricky. I do understand that I could put a URL like this, but I think this is my understanding that you could copy a normal path to a file. But I think you have to put it as file dash. Oh, yeah. Like, I think you should do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And backslashes should be forward slashes. Should it? Let me let me try something. Um, and this should be done by a, yeah, there it is. So this, this uh, there forward slashes. So let's do that real quick. Um, uh, backslashes to forward. There you go. So if, and I don't need the, now the, the navigation complete stuff for now, because everything we're yeah. doing should be already done, hopefully. Right. There wow. You there you go. So, and, and, and let me do this. Hold on. Let me remove this guy, get the main here. So uh, let me make it uh, 800 by 600 here. So. We have our map, fully interactive map, I would assume. So uh, this is the part that I wanted to test. Yeah. So I could really definitely, nice. right. So that means you can have your API. And actually, this is the funny thing. Your page here, this is the part that must change. It's the script yes, section, yes, yes, right? Yes, 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 Everything yes. else, yeah. you can keep exactly as it is. But the only thing that changes is the script because this script here is the one that is creating this, the, the centers, the latitudes, longitudes, and you're just initializing the map and doing everything. So yours, you can have a map, do whatever you want, have it in a file, right? Mm -hmm. And your web view is just going to load that file as your result. Fantastic, yes. Right. Only I mean, it, it, it could also just load the, the template and then insert the uh, dynamic code that you always are, are changing around as a script. I guess that yes. would be the, hmm. the easiest yeah, way. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. So so you can have kind of like a, a, a template and this part that is the script, have yeah. it in a separate file and you just use your script source and point or to Or not the even file. in a file, right? You don't need it as a separate file. You can insert it into the web view as, a, uh, as just JavaScript commands. Because oh, why, you know, how, how we did, around, yeah, right? exactly yeah. how how we did before, which is this, exactly, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, execute script. Yeah. You can yeah. execute different scripts dynamically. So if you switch, you know, the size of the circles or something, you do the modifications. Right. A hotkey is going to have a different script created for you, and then you just pass it, and it would just update the view. So again, this is very interesting. Uh, and, and, and <laughs> I was not expecting that I could go with with the when you sent me the file from J from Fiddler, you know the JS Fiddler. That's when it popped in my in my head. Like but this is an HTML file; you can just have it in a file and it will work. So this is great um, for many applications. What I would say is, if your map, if you need a map in which you want to respond to user interaction in the map. Yeah, like for example, clicking this button. Yeah. When the user clicks this button, I want to do something in auto hotkey. Mm. That's what is going to be a little bit tricky, right? Mm. right? Yeah. Because I want to do it the other way around, Isaiah. Right, so you, you want is, good, good, people, good. Yeah. yeah, people will interact <laughs> with the auto hotkey GUI, and it will change the map. Right. That that would be a little bit easier as we just yes. demonstrated. Right. Yeah. But. Getting events out of a page is not that it's impossible. It's just that it's mm. tricky, especially with more complex views um, that they might be um, that they might be uh, like where, uh, Google, Facebook. Those guys are going to be a little bit more tricky to interact with because they are more complex. But if you interact with a normal page. I don't know, a uh, local page on your work or your, it, it might not be as complex. Well, to give an example, just to kind of paint that picture, and, and I think maybe this is a way you could do that in some cases. I'm using the Google API to get mm -hmm. some data, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm then using the auto hotkey GUI to potentially manipulate that data by user interaction. Right. And then I'm passing back that change to the API. Back to the, back to the map again. So for example, to give a practical example, 
maybe I'm saying they draw this map and then I say, oh, as you said, make the circle bigger and the right. definition of the circle radius is captured in the auto hotkey environment and right. then it pushes back the increased this, size. Yeah, of, these, these numbers are yeah. variables instead of yeah. fixed size. And yeah. every time you make some changes in the GUI, for example, a slider, yeah. you're yeah. going to multiply the chain, the size of the thing based on the slider. Totally yeah. correct. And the funny thing is um, you can have an edit control, for example, outside of the map, which yes. you can type into and hit enter. And that you can use it to feed the algorithm that, that's down here exactly again. What I, exactly what I want to do. So I want to have an edit control that gets a variable as the map back. Yeah, as the and map then ask the map to redraw it. Or redraw right, it and this is the part. As the map is um, built in here in the script, you see this init map mm. creates this, but mm. you might have to have a function, probably the same init map. You just call it again. And it would just redraw everything based on a specific. Yes. So I, I anticipate exactly that. I will call the function again, but I will change one of the parameters. Yeah, you're modifying the parameters before calling the function, is what you're saying. Yeah. And I could pass that from AutoHotkey yes. to the script. Yes. Using the JavaScript that Thomas was talking about. In my case, personally, what I would do is the initialized function should stay like that. And then you have another function that says function update. And your function is going to take some parameters like the cities, lat, long, whatever. And then the function is just going to update the view instead of creating a new map, which if you create a totally new map, it is a little bit different. But again, there are many ways of going around that. But I think it's totally... I mean, worst know, case it, scenario would mean you would have to reload the complete uh, map after you change something. That would be the, the worst that's, thing. That's that's what, what I'm thinking. Uh, Instead of reloading the could, whole map... You yeah, know, like, it depends on the JavaScript code, I guess, if that supports updating um, I think it these does. individual changes. Okay, yeah, great. Then. I think it does. I, um, the, the, uh, I took a look at this API a long time ago because I was trying to do a specific um, um, little program for building kind of like directions to call that. Oh, well, I forgot routes. I wanted to give it a few points and that it would actually calculate the routes for me. So so when I was doing that, one of the things is what if I add a new point? I do not want to recalculate everything, just calculate it to the last point. Yeah, yeah. And it does that and it redraws the map right away. Great. So it Great. was a very good... Um, if you watch the video with Geo, and then this was probably four or five years ago that I did. His family has a company, a pretty large company. He works there, right? He and they they they're a shipping warehouse. So he used uh, the Google Maps back then to calculate and to give them you know indications of where to go and do all the the optimized drive time and actively keep up to date. If I remember correctly, where the vehicles are, you know, be able to show them. It was it's crazy. It's amazing what you can do with it. Yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah, and and basically, it is free. Most of the things that you can do with it are free unless you're doing a very high volume amount, which most people don't. So it is amazing that you can actually leverage that. And, and now with the web view, let me, let me say this. If you're just displaying stuff, you can still use the ActiveX control to do that. Okay, so you can just go because right. it's the same. The concept would be exactly the same. I think I changed this code to use the ActiveX and the navigate function to navigate to that file, and it would display fine because it's Google. The problem with the ActiveX yeah. control yeah. is that as soon as you move to other pages, it might not display correctly. Actually, actually, Thomas and I, we had to move away from it very quickly. Yeah. Because Even for somewhat simple web pages, it, it wasn't uh, great anymore. Right, yeah. exactly. On the other hand, the, the web view, you know, I can only say good things about it. It, uh, you know, it, it takes a second to load, but it's very stable so far. I think after we uh, got the hang of it, 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 you know, no issues whatsoever. And... Uh, yeah, it's a great library. Uh, At this point, I think for you, Ryan, specifically, it's just a matter of learning how to, mm, you know, mm. display it, how to display yeah. it. And and it, it is just a few lines of code. So whatever yes. GUI you have, you just go ahead and create it and pop it into and navigate to the file. That's that's just that. That's it. Not Very simple. Else. Right. Yes. Amazing. Right. And you Very unlock all that value of the JavaScript, the interactions, everything. That's great. Perfect. Josias and Thomas, thank you. 
You're welcome. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone. I think we had some really good learnings here. And the the you know the route we went down just because it was Isaiah. I think you were trying to demonstrate how to interact with the web page. It is. Yeah. It, it it was fine. It's just that's how we started into our program, and we didn't realize like, wait a minute, let's yeah, we if we had if, it in a way we didn't mean to, right? Right, exactly. If I had noticed that we could have done this at the beginning, it would have been a very simple <laughs> five yeah, minute it, video. But part of this video was to demonstrate how you can interact with the page, right? So that wasn't necessarily what we needed to do here, but it's a good learnings for people because that event listener stuff and watching for it that it is. Obviously, like you were showing in the code, right? It's it's a little more complex. It, it looks more complex because it is objects. So if you learn a little bit more about objects, it comes to a point in which you would understand what is going on really simply. And for me, I had never interacted with the events part of it. But as soon as I see the code, I know, oh, those are objects. This is what is going on. So having a little bit of a grasp of how objects work is great because other languages rely on that as soon as you go <laughs> oh there you go the objects <laughs> so, as soon as you as soon as you uh, dive into something that has to do with another language you will see objects anywhere and this is basically javascript the first thing your code does ryan is create an object that's the first thing it does uh because that list of cities is actually a big object so right there the first piece of that code right there is an object the only thing is that we're not used to that in auto hotkey, but if as soon as you get kind of like a little bit of an idea of them, it doesn't get that difficult to work with. Them. Thank you. Thank, Wonderful. Thank you guys for being here. Um, please like the video if you learned something or subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We are the largest auto hotkey channel out there, dumping out new stuff. And uh, thanks everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.